uh, thanks everyone and uh, good morning, good afternoon to people in North America and I guess good evening to people in Europe and if you're in Asia, well, thanks for staying up this late. So uh, yeah, welcome to our presentation for Bluezell Web 3.0 and I'm uh, Neeraj Murarka, I'm CTO and co-founder of Bluezell. We, uh, I'll try to be real quick, we started Bluezell in 2014 in uh, Vancouver, Canada and we moved our headquarters to Singapore in 2016. Uh, we did an ICO in uh, 2018, and it was uh, centered around our decentralized database. So that's what I'm going to talk about uh, to start with, and then I'll move into our off-chain uh, product. So yes, the you know I'm going to start with the cause. We're using Cosmos, so I'm going to talk about that in our blockchain secure architecture, and then I'll move into kind of the main topic, which is our decentralized content management system, or DCMS which uses our blockchain combined with off-chain just-in-time rendering of the content. All right, so the Bluezell Cosmos blockchain, the uh, secure architecture. So just real quick, we, we, we actually ran a validator competition for the last three weeks on top of Cosmos and we learned a lot of things. So real quick, uh, this isn't really the main topic here, but I wanted to talk about our architecture and what we, you know, basically what is our backend on top of which everything that I'm going to talk about later runs on. So, you know, we're, we're using Cosmos for those of you not familiar, it's a proof of stake, delegated proof of stake network and uh, blockchain. And uh, this is kind of our design. We run our own validators. We encourage the public to run validators. And um, we have a pretty elaborate security design here. And this actually came about organically from uh, some, uh, I guess, white hat hackers who decided to attack our network while it was running. So we learned some pretty interesting things while we were at it. Um, as you can see here, our validators run, but they're always protected by sentries. And uh, we have four types of sentries here, and I'll get into that in a moment. But as you can see on the bottom, we allow the public to run validators, and that's actually part of the point, is that we want members of the public to be able to participate in this network. That's what makes it decentralized. And long-term, Bluezell is not intending to run all the, you know, the whole network. So, you know, the, the sentries are there to protect the validators and ensure we have uptime and protect us from uh, denial of service attacks. So four types of sentries, which are kind of interesting. One of them is private, which uh, doesn't allow any access to the outside world. It really only allows our validators to talk to each other. Uh, so our friendlies, our gateway validate uh, sentries uh, use P2P and they allow um, our sort of island validators, we have security zone, to talk to validators in the outside world or sentries in the outside world. And then when we move to the client sentries, those basically provide client services so that if somebody's building a mobile app, a game app, whatever it is that they want, and they want to talk to our network, to one of our validators, they can do so through our client sentry. And then the sandbox one is a really fun one. We had a lot of requests from hackers saying, hey, we want to try to punch holes into your security uh, can you give us like a punching bag? And that's our sandbox. So that's kind of where we tell people, yeah, go nuts, hit our sandbox and see what you can do. So it's kind of a fun way for us to figure out what are the problems in our network. That's our sandbox. So, um, you know, we, we hold a 66.67 super majority right now for all our networks, which is technically not decentralized, but we're doing this just because it's a compromise until we sort of figure things out. So once we kind of gain enough trustworthy uh, third party validators to join our network, we're going to slowly relinquish that super majority. But for now, we want to hold that just in the unlikely event that, you know, we don't have proper validators and we sort of have to keep the network going with our own validators. And I'm going to kind of skip this step, but we've got some pretty cool uh, DevOps processes to really spin up a chain really fast. It's pretty interesting and it's something that I'll be doing in a, in a subsequent event, event for just my company showing how we can spin up new blockchains in under 10 minutes using this architecture on uh, a mix of AWS, GCP and Azure. So now I'm going to move into kind of the main kind of subject matter here for today's talk, which is our decentralized content management system. Um, and what it, I mean, most of you are probably familiar with the CMS. You've probably heard of WordPress. WordPress uh, is a pretty popular content management system. Uh, WordPress runs centrally on servers on the cloud. What we're doing here is we want to move away from that to a decentralized model where you still have a content management system, but it runs on the blockchain. But it's still benefiting from a lot of the benefits of off-chain 
uh, services, which is part of you know the what, what I'm talking about here. So here's kind of the flow. Um, in you got your web browser in. Uh, can you can you guys see the arrow by the way? Can you see this arrow that I'm moving around or no? Okay. So the web browser um, is where the client is, and let's say they go to bluezell.com. So they're, uh, that's gonna look up a CNAME record and then it's going to go and try to resolve it with say Cloudflare, whoever your DNS is. And that's actually gonna come up with many different endpoints. And that's gonna go back to the browser. The browser will then go and refer to one of those IP addresses to access what's called our DCMS web access entry point. So it's gonna use HTTP 1.1, the URL header, to figure out literally which, which website you're trying to access. That's what it's gonna do here. And then it's gonna to go to Bluezell here, the Bluezell database node to grab the module view controller code. It's gonna grab that, return it back to the entry point. So any HTML5, JavaScript, PHP, that's um, then going to get uh, executed. So that entry point can execute any sort of dynamic content, PHP, Node.js, whatever. And that's gonna return back to the browser in number eight. The browser can now basically show the website. To the web user, they don't even know that they've hit a decentralized endpoint. Um, the user, now let's say the user fills out a form. So it's a writable action, that's number nine. It goes back to the entry point. The entry point is now gonna execute any sort of dynamic code that needs to run in number 10. It's gonna go back to the database node. It's going to write it and um, Finally, the access point is gonna send back the data for the final rendered content based on uh, whatever you wrote. So, you know, it can refer to content that again came from Bluezell, but it could also use IPFS for any sort of content that's coming from there. So uh, real quick here, the uh, storage mechanism, there's really two places where your content is coming from. The uh, model view controller, would come from Bluezell. So anything that's like images and large videos or any kind of large files would come from IPFS. So as I said, it works with existing browsers. That's a very big requirement. You don't wanna add plugins or any sort of requirements for extensions. So no friction there. Anybody out there that's got a mobile or web browser on a desktop can use this. And it uses the existing DNS system, no special DNS. Um, there's no dependence on a centralized entity. Obviously, that's a big point. Uh, website uptime is not dependent on the existence of anyone, including Bluezell. If Bluezell were to go away tomorrow, this would continue to work. It's highly available. It automatically load balances and it's censorship and attack resistant. And it uses a blockchain uh, grade security for everything, the website content, server side code and application data. Now let's get into the off-chain magic sauce. Um, we're using the blockchain for its key value prop, which is storing data. And this is kind of the focus. We wanna, we wanna make sure that we're using the blockchain only for what it excels at. And to me, that's really about data storage. It's not about executing the logic because a lot of stuff, especially like a, D, a CMS, you don't need uh, to run everything on the blockchain, like say on Ethereum where every node runs DApps. So all the application middleware processing is now moved from uh, the nodes to the servers or even to your browser. So a lot of the stuff is now running in your browser and say JavaScript. So there's orders of magnitude of, import, uh, of uh, improvement in terms of scale so that the dApps can run on the blockchain and where every node, uh, where every node isn't running the code. And our, our DCMS basically makes it practical now for dApps to run everywhere. You don't have the issue of scale that has been plaguing Ethereum for a long time. It's easy to author and browse and for normal people to access. Um, so Niraj, we have about one minute left. Okay, perfect. I'm on pace. Uh, centralization versus decentralization real quick. This is a topic that I think is a theme for today. Um, we all know we're in the blockchain space. Centralization is not ideal. It's bad for scaling, security, uh, governance. There's can be censorship. So we know that centralization is not great. That's why we invented the blockchain. That's why we're all here. But we also have realized, and that's why we have this talk, that decentralization is not 100% always applicable. You need to figure out where decentralization brings value and not blindly apply it everywhere. And as you probably know, there's been ICOs, there's been projects over the last few years that probably made the mistake of just applying decentralization anywhere as if it is some sort of magic Midas touch. It's not. 
So I, I believe that Bluzel, especially with our DCMS, is an excellent example of balancing the right placement of decentralization with the blockchain and then using centralization uh, uh, like the off-chain application of uh, web execution and our, our DCMS. So that's, that's kind of it for the end of my slides. I know I kind of uh, went through that pretty fast, but I think I'm on time, right, Alan? Yeah, looks good. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, well thanks so much, Niraj. Certainly appreciate it.